with folded hands I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all of you the misery is gloom with folded hands I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all of you the misery is gloom with folded hands I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all of you the misery is gloom with folded hands I beseech the Buddhas of all directions Light of Dharma for all of you the misery is gloom with folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. To shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all vivid and miseries gloom. 
With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all befitted misery's gloom. Please be seated. Good morning, all of you. And uh, today, as we know, today is the birthday of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And the best way by which to observe, celebrate the birthday of enlightened beings <coughs> is, and um, the particular for enlightened beings like His Holiness the Buddha Shakyam and His Holiness the Dalai Lama and so forth. The, whether you, cel you celebrate the birthday and they are very happy, and this is this concept is be they transcend it. So even even a single breath they take is for the benefit of sentient beings for us. So with this in mind, the whatever we do something meaningful for ourselves, that is the best way of celebration of the birth of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So and the. In this regard, Tibet House, we every year we have some other programs like religious harmony, uh, conferences, and then a tree plantation ceremony. And round, now uh, we also started round table discussion on ecology because His Holiness really thinks about the ecology as well, religious harmony. And then in the evening at six o'clock Indian Standard Time, we also have we started the taking the aspects of Buddhism about which we do in the morning. This also we do in the evening for the who's ever interested online, offline, both. Um, but this time, um, the, um, so we're going to do it from here, and the. Um, anybody who's interested, they will take part online <coughs> from the rest of the world. So this is what we're doing. And here, particularly if you can focus on dedicating everything for the well-being of the all sentient beings, well-being of the Dharma, this is the best gift for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And His Holiness very clearly indicated that <coughs> the the best gift for you on my birthday is that you practice bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness. His always reiterated it several times. So with this mind, a study, reflection, meditation, not be just taken away, carried away by the fantasies, but being realistic, what can really benefit you, what can really, through you, what can really be, how you can create a benefit for the world, for other beings. So wholeheartedly you study, for example, the great Narendra traditions, Narendra Master's teachings. If you do that, so some people, they associate Narendra instead of with Tibet House. That is our naivety. Narendra is not really with Tibet House. So Tibet House, we just picked up the Narendra tradition and we're just following the footsteps of the Narendra. So Narendra and Tibet House, these are not equated. So the point of Narendra is huge, amazing contribution for the whole universe. So this is what we are not amiss. So uh, whatever little practice that we do, even though you cannot be connected to any other sentient beings, so just hold on in practice that I'm doing this. When you do good, your parents are so happy. The children sometimes, they're doing good just to make the parents happy because the parents know that you're going to become, you're going to be happy. So with this in mind, the whatever we do, let's do this for the benefit of the ascension beings, that Buddha Dhamma flourish. Through these that you become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. These three things. Sentient beings are benefited. The Buddha Dhamma, which is the, the source of the joy for all the beings that flourish, and that you become Buddha, that these two things happen for everyone. These are the three best things that we can do. 
pray and greatest of offerings to his own as the red number and all possible results okay <clears throat> with this in mind i hand over to from betana so let's just take a few minutes to check in with your posture and make sure that your back is straight and aligned and yet relaxed and your eyes are at a 45 degree angle cast forward and then just do a quick uh, check in to see whether there's any part of your body that needs some extra attention if so just breathe in and relax that part of the body and then just bring your attention to your breath the in and out of your breath and with your out breath just completely relax and let go and now from this quiet space we will visualize in front of us the refuge field sitting on a beautiful lotus and moon cushion is none other than his holiness in the form of shakyamuni buddha one face and two hands surrounded by all the buddhas and bodhisattvas and the 17 nalanda masters and all our teachers each of them looking at us with great love and compassion so since they see everything about us we open our hearts to them and allow that loving wise compassionate energy to pour into us so just take a few minutes to feel their loving wise compassionate presence and then surrounding us is the bodhicitta field on our left hand side is our mother and all female sentient beings from the six realms and on our right hand side is our father and all male sentient beings from the six realms so imagine that there are sentient beings as far as i can see and we are including each and every sentient being without leaving a single one and then we remind ourselves of the purpose of this practice as gishala beautifully mentioned we are doing it on the benefit of all sentient beings to spread the dharma so that we can become fully enlightened by removing the dirt of the afflictive and cognitive obscurations and letting the inner wisdom or the clear light mind shine through so that we may attain fearlessness and ultimate happiness for the benefit of all sentient beings so with that motivation in mind we turn to page 3 and we'll recite the verses while mentally invoking their profound meanings and associated experiences page 3 enthused by great compassion you taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the buddha gautama i pay homage enthused by great compassion you taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the buddha gautama i pay homage enthused by great compassion you taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the buddha gautama i pay homage so we'll take refuge and generate bodhicitta first in english followed by tibetan i go for refuge until i'm enlightened to the buddha the dharma and the sangha by my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth may i become a buddha to benefit all sentient beings I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha the Dharma and the Sangha by my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha the Dharma and the Sangha by my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings Sangye chodan soge chognam la jangju bardyo dani kapsu che dagi jin so gipe sonam ki 
Drola Penchir Sange Drupal Shog Sange Chodan Sogi Chognam La Jangju Bardu Dani Kapsuchi Dagi Jin Sogi Pe Sognam Ki Drola Penchir Sange Drupal Shog Sange Chodan Sogi Chognam La Jangju Bardu Dani Kapsuchi Dagi Jin Sogi Pe Sognam Ki Drola Penchir Sange Drupal Shog Independent origination, there is no seizing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme among all teachers, the one who taught this peace which is freed of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas and the Buddhas, which through the knowledge of all lead hearers seeking pacification to complete peace, which through the knowledge of paths causes those helping migrators to achieve the aims of the world, and through the possession of which helps subduers expound a variety of teachings. The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teacher, sugata, and protector, to you I make prostrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who eternally shines forth the forever noble light rays, to you, the Buddha, I make prostrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. So we'll recite the essence of the dependent origination mantra. Om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tun te shantata gato he vadat te shanchayo niroda evam vadi mahashramanaye swaha Om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tun te shantata gato he vadat te shanchayo niroda evam vadi mahashramanaye swaha Om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tun te shantata gato he vadat te shanchayo niroda evam vadi mahashramanaye swaha the meaning of the Tendral Ningpo Mantra, all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes as well is taught by the great seer. Profound, peaceful, elaboration-free, clear light and non-composite, such is the nectar-like dharma I have discovered. Finding no one to fathom this teaching, in silence I will retire into the woods. Beyond utterance, thought, and expression is the perfection of wisdom, which is unborn, unseized, and has the nature of space. It is the object of apprehension of self-realized wisdom. To you, the mother of the Buddhas of the three times, I pay obeisance. The four seals of Buddha's teachings. All composite things are impermanent. All contaminated things are of the nature of suffering. All phenomena are of the nature of emptiness and selflessness. Transcending sorrow is peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma. Likewise, the Guru is the Sangha. The Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for refuge to the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings of miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of eons. 
The Buddha does not wash the negativities of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of suchness that beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all bewildered in misery's gloom. Instructions on parting from the four attachments. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. <laughs> if you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Page one. Four, one, four. <coughs> Praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, to the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When, O supreme amongst humans, you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides, then said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise then, I prostrate. With pure bodies formed supremely pure, Wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like a spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. Dust free like you, the three worlds are not, incomparable wise one, to you I prostrate. The savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean. To you, the Tathagata, I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime pure reality, to the dharma that pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you, the Sangha, I prostrate. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud. See conditioned things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the foe of falls, and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. Page 2929. The Heart Sutra, the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Buddha was dwelling on mass of vultures mountain in Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Vilokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Vilokiteshvara. How should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom train? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya Vilokiteshvara, said this to the Venerable Sharadwati Putra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. 
Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unproduced, unseized, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly, completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata, Om, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam, Gate, Bodhiswaha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Buddha arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya of Lokiteshvara saying, well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Buddha having thus spoken, the venerable Sharadvati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya of Lokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Buddha. This completes the Arya Bhagavati Prajnaparamita Hridaya Sutra. And now we'll recite the mantra seven times. Tayata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam gate bodhiswaha teata 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 
ओम गाते गाते पारा गाते पारा साम गाते बोधि स्वाहा ते आता ओम गाते गाते पारा गाते पारा साम गाते बोधि स्वाहा by the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing the power of truth, may inner and outer hindrances be transformed. May they be dispelled. May they be non-existent. May they be pacified. May all negative forces opposed to the dharma be completely pacified. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the dharma. May all enjoyments be in accord with the dharma. May auspiciousness and perfect happiness Provide this place now. Page three five, three five. Eight verses for training the mind by Geshe Langre Tangpa. With a determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which surpasses even the wish fulfilling gem, may I hold them dear at all times. Whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest amongst all and from the very depths of my heart, respectfully hold others as superior. In all my deeds, may I probe into my mind, and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I strongly confront them and avert them. When I see beings of unpleasant character and those oppressed by strong negativity and suffering, may I hold them dear, for they are rare to find, as if I've discovered a jewel treasure. When others, out of jealousy, treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, and scorn, may I take upon myself the defeat and offer to others the victory. When someone whom I have helped or in whom I have placed great hopes mistreats me in extremely hurtful ways, may I regard her still as my precious teacher. In brief, may I offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly, may I quietly take upon myself all hurts and pains of my mothers. May all this remain undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane concerns, and may I, recognizing all things as illusions, devoid of clinging, be released from bondage. Lama Sunkapa's Lamrim Dedication Prayer, verse 1. From my two collections, vast a space that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom eyes blinded by ignorance. The seven limb practice, excerpt from the King of Prayers, the extraordinary aspiration of the practice of Samantha Bhadra. I bow down to the youthful Arya Manjushri. You, the Buddhas, the lines amongst humans, gone to freedom in the present, past, and future, in the worlds of ten directions, to all of you, with body, speech, and sincere mind, I bow down. With the energy of aspiration for the Bodhisattva way, with a sense of deep respect, and with as many bodies as atoms of the world, to all you Buddhas, visualize as real, I bow down. On every particle are Buddhas numberless as particles, each amidst a host of bodhisattvas. And I am confident the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with Buddhas in this way. With infinite oceans of praise for you and oceans of sound from the aspects of my voice, I sing the breathtaking excellence of Buddhas and celebrate all of you Sugathas. Beautiful flowers and regal garlands, sweet music, scented oils and parasols, sparkling lights and sublime incense, I offer to you victorious ones, the Buddhas. Fine dress and fragrant perfumes, sandalwood powder heaped high as Mount Meru, all wondrous offerings in spectacular array, I offer to you victorious ones. With transcendent offerings, peerless and vast, with profound admiration for all the Buddhas, with strength of conviction in the Bodhisattva way, I offer and bow down to all victorious ones. Every harmful action I have done with my body, speech, and mind, overwhelmed by attachment, anger, and ignorance, 
All these I openly lay bare before you. I lift up my heart and rejoice in all the merit of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in ten directions, of solitary realizers, hearers still training, and those beyond and of all ordinary beings. You who are the bright lights of the worlds in ten directions, who have attained the Buddha's omniscience through the stages of awakening, all you who are my guides, please turn the supreme wheel of Dharma. With palms together, I earnestly request you who may actualize Parinirvana, please stay with us for eons, numberless as atoms of the world, for the happiness and well-being of all wanderers in samsara. Whatever slight merit I may have accumulated by making prostrations, offering and confessing, rejoicing and requesting that the Buddhas stay and teach, I now dedicate all this for the full awakening of all beings. So now, as we recite the short mandala offering, we can visualize extensive offerings we are making to His Holiness the Dalai Lama on his birthday. So we'll recite first in English and then in Tibetan. This ground, anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. Sashi Pu Ki Chu Shing Me Tu Tra dharmas of Venerable Gampopa. May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the dharma. May I be blessed that my dharma practice is on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is freed of flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. The four dharmas of Venerable Bhikshu Mahasattva, becoming utterly frustrated with the ignorance that grasps a true existence, please bless me to generate genuine renunciation seeing all aspects of samsara as viciously repulsive. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with a precious bodhicitta that cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of impact that does not see even an atom of intrinsic reality on the basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious wisdom, <clears throat> the non-duality of bliss and emptiness. Idam Guru Ratna Mandalaka Niryatayami. Thank you, Venerable Bhajanala. <clears throat> the next, the foundation of all good qualities, the roadmap to Buddhahood. By Lama Zongkapa. The foundation of all good qualities is our kind and perfect pure Guru. Correct devotion to Him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon Him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After that, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of virtuous and non virtuous karmas follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me to always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all virtuous deeds. 
Samsaric splinters are unsatisfying and unreliable. Seeking them is the door to all suffering. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me with you and with a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Let by say pure thought, mindfulness, and alertness in great cushion arise. The root of the teaching is keeping the breath and vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into a sea of samsara, so have all mother and greater beings. Please bless me to see this train in Supreme Bodhicitta and bear the responsibility of freeing my greater beings. Even if I develop Bodhicitta but I don't practice the three types of morality, I'll not achieve enlightenment. But in my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the Bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I pacify distractions to wrong objects, and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to share it quickly within my mind's frame, the unified part of Kamabara and special inside. Having become a pure vessel by training in the general path, please bless me to enter the holy gate of the fortunate ones, the supreme Vajra of ego. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows and samaya. As I have become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pleasures like my life. Then having realized the importance of the two stages, as in Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Gurus who show the noble path, who practice it for long lives, please bless me to pacify completely, all out and inner hindrances, in all my lives, never separated from perfect Gurus, enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the qualities of stations of the path, I could attain the state of Vajatara. Makes him a verse. You are a Vadukhtejvara, great terrestrial non referential compassion, a magistry master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, disturb holds the demons without exception. Sangha Bakran, Jewel of the Sage of the Land of Snows, Los Anta Bait of Feed and Make Prostrations. Okay, so the as we say this praise to Lama Sangha, in the context of the three qualities, it's not just that you are great. It's that okay, you are you are amazing. How you s serve the Dharma and sentient beings with these three perfect qualities. I'll also learn from you. The quality of compassion, like Ara, the Arabalukteshvara. I'll also try to be compassionate as much as possible in whatever way. Not be good at saying no, not possible, right? Be good at saying yes, it's possible. When you say yes, possible, you have to do it. Don't just say yes, possible, yes, possible, and nothing happens. You have to make it happen. Yes, possible, and make it happen out of compassion. And it's not that 100% you can do it, not, not necessary. From your side, wholeheartedly try to make it happen. Real magic is the compassion. With compassion, everything happens. Where compassion is missing, nothing happens. Even you have the trillions of dollars and most powerful person, nothing happens on the ground. Where compassion is there, you have nothing, no power, nothing. Still you can make things work. This is amazing. Wisdom. And this compassion must be directed by the wisdom. So just say compassion without wisdom. Oh, what is this wisdom? What is this study? What is this Nalanda? What is this? If this is our attitude, we will never we will never learn how to expand your compassion. Compassion, your true nature inside. This is amazingly powerful. It's not just confined to helping some poor people. You can just multiply that thousands of thousands of times with the wisdom. For example, what his holiness is doing, he keeps expanding the works for the benefit of the for the benefit of the beings, for the world. So this is out of wisdom. Then the power, we also need the power to make things happen. So just pray that that the they learn from you the three manifestations of the Buddha's qualities, Aravalukteshvara Manjushri, Aravajapani, all embodied in the the being of Lama Tsongkhapa and today seen in the being of his holiness the Dalai Lama. I'll learn from you. So I'm your heir, I'll make sure that I'm your heir, that I'll be of service to the humanity by perfecting these qualities. So this is what we need to remember as we recite this verse. Okay, let's say this in Tibetan. <laughs> Sit <clears> her. <throat> 
and Great treasure of non-referential compassion, a majushri master of the flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, he deserves hosts of demons without exception. Sangaba, crown jewel of the sages, the let us know, no santa bed your feet, and make prostrations. Generating the mind of consummate yoga, which consists the, the main practice, which consists of four segments. The first one, which is Jamaat meditation, renunciation, Buddhist reduction, friendliness, or the first Jamaat practice. Okay, you know, so this is going to be the second last day for this retreat, and the particular for the new, and also, also for the, the long term practitioners, the, the practitioners and students of the Buddhist teachings, um, for you also, and the newcomers. As a special for newcomers, that the single point of meditation we should be particularly careful with the number three and number four. And with respect to the single point of meditation, eyes not close and the back will not right is very important. Oh, yes, I have to have the effect. Let's manage, we can manage you over here. The manager is asking if. The, so, what can be done that he has the back pain? The moment he starts meditating, there's a back pain happening. So, I said that we are doing it. There, there's a, a very simple physical exercise and then a breathing exercise too. And then breathing meditation. So, three things combined together would be helpful. So, uh, right from the beginning, I don't usually do do that. But since this is, we all, we all know it so well now. And we also have some idea of what the Buddha's teaching is all about, not just physical, physical exercise. So today, we when it's in yoga, means physical exercise. So the in order to remove this, what do you call it, like the, uh, the belief, yoga means physical exercise. No, yoga is moved beyond Buddhism. If I start with exercise, we have all Buddhism exercise. 
that if I avoid doing these things. So now that you know a little bit about what this prejudice is, and then possible you also need to feel the gravity and the beat of the body like that. Okay. So with this moment, um, the I would say it would be good now is the right time for us to do this. Excellent. It's ready. Okay, this is very helpful, particularly for the those who feel that backing, but it, it would be sedentary lifestyle style and we sit for meditation for long hours or daily daily. Then you see that uh, this pain is likely the back the back leg is likely. So how to get into this is be uh, this exercise would be very helpful. Ready? <coughs> okay. First what we do is that we we hold the back upright and hold the two knees. And make sure that you have a little space. The, okay. Yeah. And if possible. Any? Question. Question coming in front. And then the, the, the bladder. You okay, the go over there. So you give it space. Okay. Um, we need a little space. Are you ready? So what you do is then your arms straight, your arms straight, and then the first you bring your shoulder, your right shoulder in, like this. Right shoulder in, this arm, the right arm should be straight, left arm can be little, that is fine, but the shoulder should be in like this. Can you do that like in, out, in, can you do that? Okay, good. So with this, your Right arm should be straight all along, and the left arm can be bent a little bit, and the shoulder inside, and try to bring the right shoulder to your left knee as much as possible. And some of the young people can even touch. So try to just don't do it very forcefully, but gently. When you do it gently, when you do it, meanwhile, your head also should go towards the, the left side. Okay. Uh, three times. One, up again, two, again, three, good. Now, likewise, we do with the left shoulder. Left shoulder in, and left shoulder should be the straight all the way down, and the right shoulder, right arm can be a little bent. Can do that in out and do that. Just see. Okay. Yes. And then arm should be straight. Left arm should be straight. And then to the right knee three times. One. Two. Three. Okay. Do you feel about ple the pleasant pain? Yeah. <laughs> the pleasant pain. Do you feel that? Little pain, but it's pleasant. You feel that? Okay, once more. The right shoulder. One. Two. Three. Okay, left shoulder. One. Two. Three. Do you, do you feel your back <coughs> stretching? Do you feel the back stretched? Very good. Okay. Right shoulder once more. One. Two. Three. Left shoulder. One. Two. Three. Good. Okay. So this is with your the physical. This if you do it for two or three two or three days, the back will go away. It's very good exercise. The next is the breathing exercise, also known as the nine round breathing exercise. Ready? Your hands out. So this is just to demonstrate. Later on, you don't have to go to like this. 
So, <coughs> now you do it, hands out, thumbs inside, wrap the thumbs with your other fingers, upside down, so this fist upside down, and pull in your knees. And the two arms should be straight, straight. Again, back upright, but don't be too rigid. Upright, flexible. And two arms straight. And pull, pull through your knees, legs, ribs, and then before it reaches the armpit, it hold in front. You run like this. <laughs> right? It's not like this. Just straight, straight, knees, legs, ribs, and straight. But don't do don't do too forcefully like this. Don't do like this. In two, three days time you have the muscle pain. Right? Like this. And then throw the two fists to your left side. Like this. And the right fist under your left armpit. Like this. Good. And release the the forefinger. The forefinger index finger. Finger and with the hind side of the forefinger, lock your right nostril and take three deep breaths. Put in your knee, left knee, again bring it down. Once more. Good. Pull, knees, legs, ribs, now to your right side, and let go of the first finger, and walk your left nostril three times. Good. Again, pull. Bring it through both nostrils. Okay, good. So this one is the nine round breathing exercise. Okay. So many of us. We'll just check this. Just touch your the tummy. <coughs> just hold it with your right the hand. Just just touch the tummy and breathe in. And okay, just uh, don't look at anybody. Just close your eyes and observe your uh, tummy. What the tummy is doing when you breathe in. Just see what the tummy is doing. Tummy is getting in or getting out when you breathe in. Then when you breathe out, the tummy is getting in, breathe out, be getting out. What the tummy is doing, just check it. Okay, let's breathe in. Breathe out. Observe, observe it once more. Breathe in. Breathe out. When you breathe in, breathe in as much as possible. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, now tell me. When you breathe in, what is the tummy doing? The tummy is getting in or getting out? Oh. Okay, how many of you tummy is getting out? Your hands. How many of you tummy is getting in? Your hands. Okay. Um, those who those who said tummy is getting in, in a way, while it is not correct breathing, but you are a good observer. You observe it so well. Many people, they actually, their tummy is getting in, they think that it's getting out. Logically, you're thinking, you can think why well, the tummy should get out, because the, the tummy should, you know, the air to get in, and the space to get out. So, you logically, you think, actually, it's getting in. Many people, you know, this wrong breathing. So, you should be extremely observant. Good observe to observe. Whether your tummy is getting in or not. Many people, even they don't know, tummy is getting in or out. You're getting it? So, those who miss the tummy is getting in when you break down, at least you have, you are really a good observer or a extreme good observer. You can be 
will observe it. So with this in mind, every time you should get out when you breathe in. Because as you breathe in, A gets in. A gets in, A needs space to expand. So the best way of how to expand the lungs is by pushing the diaphragm down. And the tummy gets out in order to give space. Whereas if you tummy gets in, it's actually squeezing. Then what happens is that the the chest part it expands. You're getting it? Because the, the tummy you're squeezing. So you're getting in the air and then the, you need space. So the only space that we left with is the upper part of the chest. So the chest expands. Sometimes people when they're really nervous or nervous, they tend to be from the chest. You notice that? Some of them may be really nervous. So which means that the lower part of the lungs is not being used. They're using just the upper part. And the upper part of the space is very small, so you have to breathe heavily. Then the, it's the chest expands like this. So the proper breathing is extremely important. With the proper breathing, your body, all the body cells get the right cells get good, good oxygen. And because of which, overall, you, you see the overall, the mind becomes clearer, your body feels light. So proper breathing, and that naturally it will have a positive effect on your body. Immunity increases, immunity boosted. So it's so important. So therefore, when you breathe in like this, like this, and you breathe in as much as possible, and if possible, try to breathe in with the same pace, not like like this. Try to breathe same pace. Like this, and breathe out again at the same pace. This will make your body, your lungs, it's an extremely good lung exercise. So, this the, it was perhaps I was in my 20s, maybe I was 25 or 26, that the once I had an asthma attack, asthma attack for some for extended period of time. And then I went to the doctor, the doctor prescribed me the, with the medicines, and it, d it did help. But then it's like forcefully forcing your trachea to expand forcefully. And later on, one of my friends, one of my Indian friends, he said that, don't take the medicines, you have to do exercise, you have to do yoga exercise. Then the, uh, he was supposed to teach me, but then there was one, the Western monk, the British monk and the when I told him about this and he taught me the exercise so it's all breathing is the breathing when you breathe in the tummy should get out when you breathe out tummy should get in as much as possible so that way your lungs are exercise maximum believe it or not within one week the breathing was extremely supple, pliant, and if I can use the word, ecstatic. There's so much bliss when you breathe. Amazing. So, the is a proper breathing. Breathe in, tummy shut, go out, and you breathe in as much as possible. And and the truth at the same pace at the same speed, not like like the body natural reaction, like like this, it should not happen. Sometimes when it breathes, they take in too much of air, then the body uh, cannot the, take it, and so therefore it gives a jerk to your body. So try to avoid this, try to avoid the jerk. If the body naturally does it, it's fine, don't worry. But from your side, don't let the body behave in the form of a jerk. Likewise, when you breathe out, then tummy should get in as much as possible. Squeeze the tummy inside. You're getting it? Okay, let's do it once more. Okay, ready? Okay, this is for the physical exercise, right? Okay, good. Ready? Okay, good. Pull. Left side. Release the fourth finger. 
block. Again, pull. Once more. Good. Okay. So now let's do the five minutes breathing. The sorry, the Shamatha meditation ready.
Okay, next renunciation, which we'll do on the basis of the four seals. Ready? Renunciation. Renunciation is to renounce the miseries, not to renounce the happiness. To renounce the miseries, we need to know how to renounce the causes of the miseries. And the causes of miseries, ultimately the Buddha identified the ignorance as the root cause of miseries. And the ignorance per se, while there are millions and trillions of kinds of ignorance, the Buddha identified four amongst many. Misperceiving impermanent phenomena is permanent. Misperceiving miseries as happiness. Misperceiving impure things as pure. And misperceiving what is selfless nature as of selfhood. To counteract these four misperceptions, but the total four seals, which you find in the first three seals, and the, the fourth one as the, the resultant state. What benefit do you get out of these? practice of the four, the, the first three seals. First, all composite things are impermanent. Composite here me, meaning things which are composed of material parts and temporal parts. While everything including the non-composite non -composite phenomena, they exist by dependence on parts. But the parts here is not just ordinary parts, but the parts in the form of tempo, the material parts or temporal parts. So what is constituted of material parts or temporal parts should necessarily be impermanent. In other words, what is the material substance in the form of the physical or in the form of mental should necessarily be impermanent in nature. Impermanence of, is of two <coughs> kinds, gross impermanence and sub-impermanence. It's so important for us to meditate in both, starting beginning with the gross impermanence. The beautiful days with which we started this retreat is coming to an end. And your beautiful days with your family, when you were young, no responsibilities, just receiving love and affection, it all stopped. And your youth, fades away, it stops. And you have aspirations. You had aspirations. Young people there, you have aspirations. Your career and so forth. This is exactly what happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 1000 years ago. Of course, the number of the population, the, the population of the world then would be much less. But they were young people and their parents. And the young people have the, the so much aspiration for their career, for their life and so forth. And the parents have so much expectation, wishing the best for their children. Whether the aspirations and the wish they have fulfilled or not fulfilled, they're all gone. They're all gone. And the old fortress all all fortresses. These are the proof that once something about what is happening today happened is gone forever. And her birth is manifest in the form of sickness, aging, death, separation and so forth. These are realities of life. So the Buddha taught whatever gathers will disperse. Whatever is accumulated gets exhausted. Whatever stands for. Whatever is born dies. It is so important for us to reflect on these points. So that we will not be grossly sucked up in the world in the form of attachment, anger, jealousy, and so forth. So this obvious evident impermanence that we see 
should necessarily be possible only if there is a underlying subtle impermanence. What is meant by subtle impermanence? To meditate on subtle impermanence, don't just t- jump to the conclusion that all composite phenomena are the energy of subtle impermanence. It's the subtle impermanence that never hit your mind. Instead, we have to go very slowly from what is visible to your real life, to real sense consciousness, to direct experience, like, oh, this child has grown too big now, this tree has grown too tall now. So from there we start, the obvious change that you see within the span of 10 years, 5 years, or 1 year and so forth, from there you begin and then go into, to make it, go into subtler, and subtle reflection. The change you that see, the obvious change that you see in a building coming up or a tree having grown to 10 feet tall is possible, though 10 feet tall within the span of 10 years is possible only if every year there is growth of one foot tall. And the one foot tall is possible the, if there is a growth happening on the level of the one inch per month, which means month by month is changing. Year, just as year by year is changing, month by month is changing. And the change that we see in one month is possible only if there's a change happen on a daily basis, 30 days, 31 days. Without that, one month change is impossible. Yes, I understand it. And the change that we see in one day is possible only if there's a change happen on the the 24 hours, each hour, this change happening. And one, the change that we see in one hour is possible only if there is a change happening on the minute by minute basis. Second by second basis. Okay, yes, change in second. I can imagine what it's like. Tick, 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 tick. This is how composite phenomena is changing. The change that you see in one second is possible only if there's change happening on the millisecond or the one second split into ten divisions or split into hundred divisions and split into thousand divisions. Thousand divisions is one millis on the level of milliseconds. And one millisecond is extremely, extremely fast. This is exactly how all the composite phenomena are moving, including body, your mind, your near and dear ones, the table, the house and so forth. This moves so fast. And just imagine that you are thrown in extremely fast moving. What do you feel? So much of fear. Faster the train moves, more fear. Why? We don't know where this train is taking us. Is it the and who decides where this train is taking us? The train driver. And if the driver is your mom, dad, it'll take you to the pig spot. But if the, either the driver is the terrorist or the driver is under the dictator, the terrorist no doubt will only take us to the slaughterhouse. Yes, unfortunately. In a case, the driver is our mind and this mind per se is okay, but the mind is under the dictate of the terrorist. Worst of the terrorist, self-grasping ignorance. And this terrorist is complemented by the self-centered attitude. So this terrorist is the worst of the contaminations of our mind. So this is what the Buddha indicated as where the, your mind is, you, you are driven, you are dictated by the, the worst of the contaminations, you only end up in the miseries. This is what the Buddha indicated as the second seal. All contaminated things are of suffering nature. What do you mean contaminated? That your mind is contaminated by afflictions. Contamination is affliction. When the mind is contaminated, influenced by the affliction, either the affliction themselves, or what is influenced by the afflictions in different ways. So that's contaminated. So we have been contaminated. Our mind is contaminated. What is contaminated should necessarily go through the miseries. Misery is like what? Three kinds of suffering. Suffering suffering, suffering change, and the pervasive condition suffering. And for us, it's so, we can easily be affected by the, affected and we can be disillusioned by the suffering suffering very easily. So it's so important to reflect on that. Then as you evolved more, 
as we keep evolving, then you will to see that why we have to go through all these suffering, suffering, sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, and so forth, the loss, the pain of having lost the near and dear ones. Why do we have to go through these things? Because there's something that which glues us into this realm of the suffering. What is that glues us there? Suffering will change. The mundane happiness. So this is not a suffering change because if you know that something is gluing us to the menace of our suffering, in the facade of niceties, in the facade of joy, happiness and so forth, we see that that is so evil. Manifest suffering is so painful and suffering change is so evil, extremely evil. Coming in the facade of joy and happiness, but behind that it drags us, sucks up into Manifest sufferings, acute, agonizing, acute, agonizing sufferings. Yes, and then as we evolve more, we come to see that we come to discover that there is a mastermind there, and the mastermind is the pervasive condition suffering. With masterminds, masterminds which remain so hidden, we are not even aware of the presence of the the pervasive condition suffering, particularly the particularly the self-grasping ignorance. We are not even aware of that, the presence. Suffering change. Although we don't see that as suffering, but we are aware of that mundane happiness. That, oh, it is there. So this is what deceives us, yes. But then for the pervasive conditions of particular self-grasping ignorance, we are not even aware of that. We cannot pinpoint to say that this is the master of all. We cannot pinpoint to that unless until we have some experience of emptiness. Okay, so it depends on the, so we should make sure that we if keep evolving by understanding the first level of suffering, then the second and the third. Okay, from that point of view, one moment of such uh, suffering, for example, like at times, you have extremely beautiful companions, friends, very kind people around you, and then you see that person is leaving you for like one month, two months, three months, four months, and so forth. You feel the vacuum, the pain of the vacuum, and the pain is agonizing. Particularly if the person leaves the world forever, dying, then the pain is so acute. When we do experience these, we are not to forget them. They are very helpful for our Dhamma practice. Remember those. One moment of such a tragedy is good enough to nullify all the past moments of merriments, festivities, joys, birthday celebrations, ceremonies. Yes, that's very true. And everything, however flowery they turn out to be like, just for the young people, the nightclubs, dance, drinking and so forth, is the height of the and the, the supposed thing, the joy and happiness, but they are so, so stupid and meaningless and shallow in the face of one moment of tragedy of losing near and dear ones, the experience of a gunshot in the, in, the, in the nightclubs, in the middle of just intoxication, in the trance of the, your mind, the gunshot is says, good enough to see you. Everything is so traumatic and so gloomy. Yes, that's very true. And one moment of loss in near ones is good enough to nullify all the past moments to be seen as so hollow and meaningless. Very true. When will this stop? It's so painful even to imagine that. It's so painful. When will this, this misery stop? When will these tears stop? They will never stop on their own until we put effort Put concerted effort to stop them. What kind of effort is required for that to be done for the root of the problem? And the root of the problem lies in the ignorance. This is what the Buddha taught. And of course, to eradicate the root, while well in session we can think of that, but in a day to day life we need to remember the. the these causes are taught by the Tathagata. So what are these causes which the Tathagata taught? Arendikarjuna summarized by saying 
Seizing common self afflictions is nirvana. Common self afflictions arise from the conceptualization of inappropriate tension, which in turn arises from the elaboration of self grasping ignorance and the elaboration ceases through the wisdom of emptiness. I am I am going to identify the the five points and the linked with our the mechanism of our suffering in samsara. And of these five, the 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 remaining four, they are the causes of the suffering. And from there we see that in a in a day to day life we need to get it try to, to mitigate, try to stop, disengage ourselves, whether content the negative or non virtuous non virtuous commas or the, the non virtuous contaminant commas, afflictions in a attention as much as possible in a day to life. And for the the elab getting rid of elaboration is a final remedy to all these the the chains, the whole mechan the points related to the mechanism of suffering. So in session we did meditation on the to get rid of the self grasping ignorance. Seeing that that's the ultimate fun the master mastermind. So if you don't want, to, if you put an end to all these tears of samsara, you, we need to get it. We need to put an end to the self grasping ignorance. So, what do you do to get rid of the self grasping ignorance? Ignorance, by the very definition, is the distorted mind which misperceives the reality. Who's ever heard of the object does not tell you with the reality? What should we do? We counter we introduce a counter force. What is that? The wisdom. What is the wisdom? Wisdom is a discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tallies with the reality. What's the reality? The reality is what the Buddha indicated as the the third seal. Everything is nature, emptiness and selflessness. Okay, let us quickly med today, let us quickly meditate on the emptiness of the let's say the, the flower, cheesecake or anything, but today we'll just put up the flower. Okay, imagine a beautiful flower. At times, when you go to the gardens or in your house, there are beautiful flowers. Or you go to some public spaces where you throw beautiful flowers. Don't just be glued. Give yourself a little space and time. Look at it. Don't be glued with attachment. Look at it. And how does it appear so beautiful? But don't just mentally be glued to it. Yes, it's so beautiful. Give you a space. Just imagine you, you are now in front of a beautiful flower. Okay, how does this flower appear to you? Like a dream or snow? Nothing to, nothing to do with my mind. It's independent of my mind. So solidly objectified and the, the intrinsically there from its own side. This belief that this flower exists as so objectively there from the object side, this is the self grasping ignorance of the flower. And how do you know that this ignorance that is not a valid mind? Okay, how do we evaluate this? For that we need to remember what the what Arinikarjuna taught. In his text, Precious Garland, if the mirage were to be water, why well, not those close by the mirror and see water? By the similar token of reasoning, applying this to the flower, if the flower would exist subjectively, why don't I see this flower as I go closer to this object? Okay, now let us go closer to this object. Going closer towards the object is what is technically referred to as the subject and flower ultimate analysis. By doing so, just ignore all those things which are not the flower. Because you are interested in the identifying the flower which exists objectively, you are looking for this. Whatever is not that, just ignore. Okay, as you go closer to the flower, you first see that, okay, the best would be by going through the, on the electron microscope. In the olden times, no electron microscope is purely the power of your thought processes. Now with the, the, the electron microscope is very easy. Okay, you're going there, the beautiful flower, initial scene is so beautiful, texture wise amazing, color combination is so amazing, tender, fresh, fragrant is amazing. As you go closer to fine tune the electron microscope, you start to see the, you start to see the, like the crack, 
crack mark, the mud, like the dry, dry mud cracked. So you can see the cracks there. Wow. It gives, it just makes you feel, I can't believe that this is the flower. Then they say the earlier appeal disappears. And these cracks are nothing but the partition of the cells. Then you start to see the cells. Through further fine-tuning electron microscope, you see the nucleus of the cells. To refer the fine to nucleus and the cell membrane inside the cytoplasm and then the nucleus inside this. And through further fine training, focusing on the nucleus, you see the chromosomes. Through further fine training the chromosomes, you see the DNA molecules. Through further fine training, you see the atoms. You can go beyond but it's good enough for, for us to stay there. Okay. Subjecting this flower to ultimate analysis, you have now come too close to the object. So what are you seeing now? I'm just seeing a pool of atoms banking each other. Okay. Which of the atom that you see now is the flower which you earlier saw is so beautiful? Nothing of the flower, nothing of the atom is beautiful. There's nothing that is beautiful now. Whereas that flower is not there. None of the atom is to be identified as the, as intrinsically as the flower. In the ultimate ultimate analysis. Okay. Now, if these atoms which you see in the ultimate, through the ultimate analysis, if these are not the flower, then the, you earlier saw the flower as so objectively there. Remove these elements, it removes these atoms, pool of atoms, and see if it does exist, if the flower does exist as different from these atoms. Remove the atoms, what is left? Nothing is left there. These are the only two possibilities for the flower. It does exist, if it does exist intrinsically or objectively, these are only two possibilities. Given that these two possibilities are ruled out, you are in a way ruled out to say that the flower exists intrinsically as objectively. So, where's this flower? In Azul Alimena, there's no flower at all. You're, dis you're discovering it. Okay, that's amazing. It's amazing. Your mind is under control, under control now. Under control meaning, your emotions are under control. With the farm, with seeing there's a flower earlier, it's just involuntary pull happens. Seeing the DNA, the seeing the chromosomes like these, these brownish striped snake-like structures, your mind is pushed. There's involuntary push happening, and seeing these atoms, no involuntary push, no involuntary pull, but the involuntary, the involuntary loss of the frame in ways of seeing it as so of your real continuous flow. Now, with respect to flower, flower's empty, so you're totally released. Wow, that is a freedom, that's amazing. Yes, indeed, I see this very powerful meditation. I'm discovering something that the flower does exist subjectively. But what's the benefit of this practice? Just as this flower dissolves and the emotional attachment to this involuntary pull towards the flower, involuntary push, by the uh, seeing it as the the, the straight snake snake like structure of the chromosomes and then the ignorance of viewing the atoms as intrinsically real um, all these three dissolve these three dissolve seeing the flower as empty of object real emptiness of the flower is subject real that is with that experience all these three different states of the mind dissolve. Okay, just as this flower dissolves, imagine if you're subject to all your sorrows, sadness, anxiety, anguish, depression, and so forth, the pain of losing near and dear one, and so forth, if you subject them to ultimate analysis, 
just as this flower dissolves, if all the miseries will dissolve, all the, all the sorrows will dissolve. Okay, yes. Once the sorrow dissolves, absolute peace, very reliable absolute peace will dawn in you. This is what the Buddha inferred, referred to as the transcending sorrow is absolute peace. Stay in this experience for a while, in this experience of emptiness, where all your sorrows are transcended. And generate a very strong wish. May I experience, may I forever, may I forever abide in this experience of emptiness, where all my sorrows are transcended. And absolute peace dawn. So where all my tears of sadness, pain stops. Okay, this is aspiration. Aspiring to abide in stably abide in the experience of emptiness in the non dualistic way where all my sorrows are transcended. This is the final understanding of renunciation. This most fine understanding of renunciation, which far excels the renunciation in the form of, oh, renounce my miseries, renounce my self grasping ignorance, renounce the contaminant karmas, afflictions, and so forth. They are renunciation, but the ultimate self renunciation rests in this experience. Okay. Slowly come out of this practice before we switch to bodhicitta practice. Are you ready? For the bodhicitta, we will do this on the basis of the four imaginables. Ready? Okay. Um, Buddhism, the practice requires a lot of support, incredible support from Buddhist Bodhisattvas, blessings. So for that purpose, in, let us invoke all Buddhist Bodhisattvas, particularly Buddhist Shakyamuni, Sonasa, Dalai Lama, and the Ari Manjushri, Ari Balukateshvara, Ari Vajrapani, Ari Mitri, Ari Tara, Ari Samadhipatra, Ari Nagarjuna, Bodhisattva Ari Deva, Acharya Chandrakriti, Acharya Bhavivika, Acharya Chandrakriti, Arya Sangha, Acharya Vasubandhu, Acharya Dignaga, Acharya Dharmakirti, Bodhisattva Chandra Deva, Bodhisattva Chandra Rakshita, Acharya Kamarashil, Lama Sainlingba from Indonesia, Lama Adisha, Lama Adisha Dibangarishri Jnana, and all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in space room, in front of us, so loving, caring, and embracing. And you are surrounded by two parents, all of whom members single children, and all demonstration makes insects, even including insects, animals, hungry ghosts, hell beings, god and god spirits, here in Tushita, in Dharamsala, in, in India, in your own country, in the world, in the entire Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe. With this mind, first, Immeasurable loving kindness. How good would it be that all my dear ascension beings are endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness? Causes of happiness primarily consisting of the most fearless mind of the wisdom of emptiness and the most beautiful mind of the altruistic bodhicitta. May all my dear ascension beings be endowed with happiness and the cause of happiness. I will take the responsibility that all my dear ascension beings are endowed with happiness <coughs> and the cause of happiness. The Buddhist Bodhisattva is witnessing that you are making such a courageous commitment like the mother after all the many years of raising her children. And today the eldest girl just age 12 and the eldest son just age 11, two of them come to the mother Telling the mother, mother, please take rest. You've done everything for us. Now we're grown up. We'll take care of our siblings. 
I will also take care of you. And the mother, although these two children, they are so young, so tender age, but the mother could not feel, mother could not believe her eyes and ears out of incredible joy and pride, tears. The tears run down her cheeks. This is exactly what has happened to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Feeling so proud of what you've done, what you are committed to do yourself today. Taking the responsibility of all demonstrations being on your shoulder. And this pride and happiness invoke the, invoke the compassionate minds of the Buddhist Bodhisattvas to stand for nectars, nectars of resurrection lies towards you and all demonstrations beings. The mere touch and lights and nectars with the bodies beings are yours, instills in all happiness and causes happiness in the minds of sentient beings in yourself. And you witnessing such a miracle is happening to us all the demon sentient beings, you intense are happy. Take three deep breaths, sign with relief. Next to miserable compassion. How good would it be that all my dear sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering? The cause of suffering primarily consists of, of self grasping ignorance and self centered attitude. May all my dear sentient beings be freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. I will take the responsibility that all my dear sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddhist Bodhisattva is witnessing that we making such a charismatic commitment, they intensely proud of pride and happy with you. This pride and happiness invoke the compassionate minds to self of nectar of soothing lights towards you and all dear sentient beings. The mere touch of lights and nectars with the body is yours. Watches of all the miseries and causes of the miseries from the dear messenger beings to yourself. And you witnessing that such a miracle is happening to us all the dear beings, you intense and happy. Take three deep breaths, sign the relief. <sighs> Next, immeasurable joy. How good would it be that all that all my dear messenger beings are never separated from happiness and the causes of happiness that they endowed with? May all my dear messenger beings never be separated from happiness and the causes of happiness that they endowed with. I will take the responsibility that all my dear sentient beings are never separated from happiness and cause of happiness that they endowed with. The Buddhist Bodhisattva is witnessing that you make such a courage commitment. They are so happy and proud of you. This is why happiness invoke their compassion minds to a sense of nectar as if it's soothing lights to you and all the sentient beings. The mere touch of lust and nectar with the body beings are yours. Stabilizes the happiness and the causes happens the beings and down with. And you've been listening such a miracle is happening to us all the dear messenger beings. You are intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sigh with relief. <sighs>
next immeasurable equanimity, how good would it be that all my dear mother and beings are freed from the biased attitude of excessive attachment for some and aversion to others. Instead of abiding in the great state of equanimity, embracing all other demonstration beings with total love and affection, leaving them aside. May all my dear demonstration beings be freed from the biased attitude of excessive attachment to some and aversion to others. I'll take the responsibility that all my demon sentient beings are freed from the biased attitude of excess for attachment to us some and aversion and aversion towards others. The Buddhist Bodhisattvas witness can do make a courageous commitment, like the mother after all these many years of raising children today, when the eldest daughter and eldest son just such a tender young age. And telling the mother, Mother, please take rest, you've done everything for us. We will take care of ourselves now. We are grown up. The mother could not believe her eyes in the ears. Such a tears of joy comes out. This is exactly what happens to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas today to see that you make such a courage commitment. And this pride and joy the Buddhist Bodhisattvas feel invoke their compassion minds to send for the nectar, nectar of respect and as to you in all demonstration beings. The mere touch of the lights and nectars with the body speaks is yours. Freeze the beings from the biased attitude for excessive attachment towards some and aversion towards others, and instead make them abide in the great state of equanimity, leaving them aside. And you witnessing such a miracle is happening to all your demonstrative beings, you are intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sign with relief. Out of scoring all the four immeasurables, this unconditional love towards all the beings. Stay in this experience for a while. Imagine that you just look at the eyes of each of the sentient beings with total love and affection. To the extent that each of the, each of the beings, they feel themselves so, so special in the eyes. How the little child feels herself or himself so special in, his, in the eyes of the mother and the father. With folded hands, let us make a Buddhist commitment three times together. On the sacred day of the birthday of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the Son of the World, the whole universe, may I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings, and also visualize all sentient beings and make the same commitment with you. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. Okay, this is amazing that we made such a commitment. Amazing. So this beautiful mind is the Bodhicitta. Slowly transform this into a spotless, clean, a spotless clean moon disk, horizontally sitting with the heart. Okay. This is amazing. Did you make such a commitment? But you have to do something. You just said, the May I become. To become Buddha, you have to do something. What will you do? I will exterminate the mental defilements, the seed of perfection, the seed of Buddhahood. Now, the but the nature is within me, within each of the sentient beings. I need to simply eliminate the mental defilements, and the Buddha is just right there within me. What will you do to do to eliminate the mental defilements? I'm going to resort to a very powerful remedy. What is that? The wisdom of emptiness. Let us let us quickly retreat the experience of emptiness which we meditated as the fourth third seal as a part of the fourth seal meditation. 
Okay. With a flower, just subject flower analysis. What do you think? I'm just in the pool of atoms. Where's the flower? None of the atoms is a flower. Remove the atoms. What is there's a flower? Nothing's left there is a flower. Now tell me where is the objective is a flower? No way to be seen, it's just empty objectively. Stay in six minutes for a while. The flower disappears. In the pool, amidst the pool of atoms, the flower disappears. You just get hold of the emptiness of flower. Just the flower disappears. No way. I'm discovering it is amazing. Slowly transform this fearless mind of the wisdom of emptiness of flower into a spotless clean thumb size white vajra vertically seated on the Bodhisattva heart. That's amazing. Now you have the blaze of non dual Bodhicitta. The moon symbolic of the conversion of Bodhicitta to guarantee that your self centered attitude is going to be exterminated by this practice. And the Vajra, symbolic of the conversion ultimate Bodhicitta, which is non dual wisdom of emptiness of the Arya Bodhisattvas, this will guarantee that you going, that this will eradicate the all the mental defilements, be it afflictive or chronic obscurations, completely from you. Wow, this is amazing. Let's not forget your dear two parents, your children, all the family members that they who are suffering terribly, generally very strong compassion towards them. And this compassion invokes the Vajramani to how to multiply infinite number of times. She had one set of the Vajra moon at the heart of her mother, one set at the heart of her father, one set each one of her family members, including children, one with each of the, the tiny vulnerable insects, the, 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 the slugs, the snails, the insects, all oh, human beings, animals, hungry ghosts, God and goddesses, spirits, everyone you share with every one of them. And share the same Vajra Moon with all the beings in India, in your own country, in the entire world, in the minds of trillions of trillions of creatures, ranging from the tiny amoeba to the biggest of the blue whales in the oceans, from the tiny, tiny insects to the to the biggest of the elephants in the wilderness and with all the beings in the entire world, in the entire Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe. Wow, that's amazing. We are extremely kind. Meanwhile, let's not forget that all Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they're watching us. Why not we invite all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas to be the guests as well as witness for our untaking the Aspiration Bodhisattva vow on this holy day? Sacred day of the Solace's birthday. As we just re making this request to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas, let us stand up to make three prostrations along with all the sentient beings to Buddhist Bodhisattvas. And let us sit on our right knees and wholeheartedly let's, let us take the Bodhisattva vow here. Aspiration Bodhisattva vow. And imagine that all beings such, all sentient beings, you have invited them to be with you. 
and all Buddhist Bodhisattvas there as our witness. And I guess, imagine that you are a little girl, extremely young little girl or little boy, just age four or five, for the first time in your life you are um, making a public appearance on behalf of the school and your parents, whatever they have to do that day, they leave, they leave behind whatever uh, to do that day to join the audience. Waving the hands to you, this is exactly what the Buddhist Bodhisattvas they are doing today. They invited, they take your, they took your invitation so seriously, and they're just fully the there for you, focused, and paying attention to what you're doing. And you, as a very responsible little girl, very responsible little boy, you bring all your siblings with you to engage in this the public appearance, which brings pride to yourself, to pride to your parents. This is exactly what you're doing. You're bringing all the sentient beings with you to take this as from Bodhisattva vow. So let's wholeheartedly recite the verses together, but reflect the meanings as much as possible. I go for refuge to the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I resource the virtues of all the beings. I hold the blessed Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Supreme Sangha. I generate the mind of Bodhicitta to resolutely accomplish the aims of others myself. Having generated the mind of Supreme Enlightenment, I invite all sentient beings to be my guests, and I shall engage in the delightful and excellent practices of full enlightenment. May I become Buddha to for all sentient beings. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Supreme Sangha. I generate the mind of Bodhicitta to resolve the accomplish the aims of others myself. Having generated the mind of supreme enlightenment, I invite all sentient beings to be my guests and shall engage in the delightful and excellent practices of full enlightenment. May I become Buddha to for all sentient beings. I go for refuge to triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Supreme Sangha. I generate the mind of Bodhicitta to resolve the crimes and aims of others myself. Having generated the mind of supreme enlightenment, I invite all sentient beings to be my guests and shall engage in the delightful and excellent practices of full enlightenment. May I become Buddha and all sentient beings. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the mind of Bodhicitta, and just as they successful dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, I was for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the mind of Bodhicitta, and I was shall too successful dwell in the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the mind of Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, that was for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the mind of Bodhicitta, and that was shall too successful train in the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the mind of Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, that was for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the mind of Bodhicitta, and that was shall too successful train in the Bodhisattva practices. Feel the joy of having received the expansion Bodhisattva vow. And just imagine that how your mother, after all these many years of receiving complaints from the school principal, today for the first time, the school principal congratulates mother and mother was perplexed. What happened? And the any complaints, instead, they said, no, no, we came here to congratulate you that your daughter, that your son drove them my point as the best students of this school for this year. The mother could not believe her eyes and ears, so much of joy, tears of joy are coming. This is exactly what happens to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. They are so happy and proud of you today. All these many lifetimes, innumerable lifetimes, they are only wishing that you do virtuous deeds so that you embrace happiness. You will only have happiness by discarding your non-virtues, discarding miseries. On the contrary, we just do the engage, the engage full engage in non-virtues. They are by constantly attracting miseries and the the shunning the virtues, thereby being deprived, remaining deprived of the happiness all the time. And today for the first time you did it and it was extreme, extreme 
unimaginable, unimaginable day to day for them. So happy and proud. And this pride and happiness they did for today invoke the Vajra Moon in the full flesh form at their hearts to multiply infinite number of times. Like rain shower, they descend to merge with the one that visualizes their heart, thereby becoming non dual, stabilized, and blessed. Leaving a special imprint in you that bodhi soon, the bodhi that was emptiness will dawn in you. Likewise, all these replicas of Vajra Moon from the house of Buddha to Bodhisattvas, they descend like rain shower, descend to merge with the one that you have visualized the heart of your mother, father, each one of the members of the children, each of the beings here in Tushita, in Dharmasala in India, in your country, in the entire world, in the entire universe, every sentient creature there. The Vajra Moon that you've shared with them, they've been, they become non-dual, sta stabilized and blessed by the descent and the merging with the Vajra Moon from the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. It's amazing. And this is the greatest of the, the gift that you can possibly think of. And today you've gifted this present to all, all the demonstration beings and of all the offerings that you can think of, the Buddha made it very clear that one moment of generating compassion far excels the gifts of the whole universe filled with they filled with gems and offered to Buddhist Bodhisattvas. If this would have been the case for the mention of our having taken the expression Buddhist for today. Today you have made the greatest offerings to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. As his always, always says that the best present presence for me on my birthday from your side is to practice Buddhism Mr. Memphis. and today you did it. And with the life of all the purposes, the meanings of life, there's nothing greater than meaning of meaning of life than this practice. And today you have given such meaning to your life. And all these wonders are happening because of the blessings, because of the incredible blessings, kind blessings of Buddhist Bodhisattvas. As is just from making them, thanking them Again, the along with all the message you make, let us slowly stand to make three prestations to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Okay, page 51. <clears throat> Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the companion of Buddha and be able to uphold the true precious Bodhicitta as ever in the cosmic life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the companion of Buddha and be able to uphold the true precious Bodhicitta as ever in the cosmic life. Throughout my official lifetimes, may always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold even the cosmic life. <clears throat> In order to further increase this Bodhicitta from now on, those with discernment who have lost their disease and awakened the mind of Bodhicitta in this way should highly praise in the following manner. Today, my life has borne fruit. Having well obtained this human existence, I've been born the family of the Buddha and now I'm one of Buddha's children. Thus, whatever actions they do from now on must be in accord with the family. Never shall they disgrace or pollute this noble and unsullied race. Just like a gold blind man discovering a jewel in a heap of rubbish, likewise, by some coincidence, an awakened mind has been born within me. It is a supreme ambrosia that overcomes the sovereignty of death. It is an inexhaustible treasure that is all poverty in the world. It is a supreme medicine that quells the world's disease. 
is the tree that shelters all beings wandering and tired on the path of conditioned existence. It is the universal bridge that leads to freedom from unhappy states of birth. It is the dawning moon of the mind that is spells the torment of disturbing conceptions. It is the great sun that finally removes the mis-ignorance of the world. It is the quintessential butter from the channel of the middle of Dharma. For all those guests travel on the path of conditioned existence who wish to experience the boundaries of happiness, this will satisfy them with joy and actually place them in supreme bliss. Today, in the presence of all the protectors, I invite the world to be guests at a festival of temper and ultimate delight. May God's demigods and all be joyful. Om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze Ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de so dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de so dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de so Ya ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de so ya ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de so Ya ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha dia ta om bewaze bewaze ma bewaze raza zamo de soha Om dare tu dare tu re 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 soha there is a prayer on page 32 <coughs> I dedicate the marriage of this gathered to the realization that is in the prayers of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas those three times and to the holding of the doctrine inscription inside when all lives through the fault this is married never separate from the four wheels of the Mahana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path renunciation bodhicitta perfectly in the two stages from our two collections of answers space that have amassed from vacuum with effort in this practice for a great length of time may have become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds with minds of light of ignorance. Deya ta om gati gati para gati Parasam gade bodhi swatyata Om gade gade Paragade Parasam gade bodhi swatyata Om gate gate para gate para sam gate bodhi swaha tyatam Om gate 
गदे गदे पार गते पार सम गदे बोधिस्वा Okay, it's eight ten now. We'll come back at nine ten. You'll come back at nine ten. Yeah, three prostrations.